Merci. Bonjour tout le monde. Initialement, je voulais donner cette conf en français, mais puis je me suis rendu compte que pour expliquer bitemporalité, on aurait besoin de, du conditionnel futur du plus que parfait, ce qui est un niveau de français trop élevé pour moi, and that's the reason why I'm going to speak in English. Uh, so today's topic is uh, bitemporality. We are going to track reproducible revisions in PostgreSQL using range types. In other words, we are going to insert, update, delete on our PostgreSQL database without losing any information. Um, we are going to see some time versioning entities with attributes. Uh, I'm going to shortly introduce you to the range types uh, that are around in PostgreSQL since uh, some the dark version of 9. Dot something. Uh, the generalized uh, search tree extension, and then a few words about Python, PsychoPG2, that is a library to access uh, PostgreSQL. And we are going to modify data concurrently and reading data consistently. My name is Miroslav Šedivý. I was born in Bratislava in Czechoslovakia. I studied to the south from Paris in Lyon many years ago. Now I'm working in Karlsruhe, which is just on the other side of the Rhine River in Germany at the French border. Uh, yes, I committed an error that I uh, used something, some other databases before PostgreSQL, but uh, my programming language is Python, so I hope that it's okay now with you. We need, for this presentation, we need some really simple data model with some records that evolve over time, because you don't want me to present the whole huge database that where I developed uh, this whole system for uh, several years ago. So we are going to find some simple data that may maybe change with time. Because this is information that was valid probably at the beginning of the movie, but during the movie many things changed. If it is too abstract for you, this is reality. These are the time zones that also change quite a lot. But these two examples, we can, we can do them much uh, simpler. We are really now going to take a very simple table of a customer with some ID, with some name, and some fee that this customer is going to pay us regularly. Um, every customer, the first two customers, they are always called Alice and Bob, of course. We have them already in the database. And now, if you want to insert a third one, the name is, of course, Carol. Um, we just have to insert it. Now, you see the difference between two, these two states of the table. There is a new uh, row, new line, uh, new record in this table, but we don't know when we inserted it. So we now know about three customers, but we didn't know that three minutes ago there were just two of them. So when did we insert the entry with the ID3? What we can do, we can add another column, insert it on, and then just every time we write a new record, it will update automatically with the current time. So with Alice and Bob that were entered, uh, inserted at the beginning of the year, we have Carol that was inserted today. So if we ask what was the state of our database, uh, the number of customers yesterday, we will get number two. Today and from now on, it will be three persons. But if we want to update the database, we need the information when the information when the data was updated. If we want to delete, what are we going to do? So what we can do, we can say, OK, an entry is valid at some point in the history. So we have two, two columns, valid since, valid until. And then we see that, OK, these two uh, records were valid from the beginning of the year until future. And then uh, as soon as we enter uh, Carol, we will see that, OK, if there is a new uh, information, new record that was uh, inserted today. And now if you need to update an entry, for example, to update uh, the fee for Alice from 10 to 15, we will update the old entry and we will say, OK, it was valid until today. And from now on, there is a new entry with Alice with the fee of 15, and it is valid from now on. So now if we select the data from the database from February, you will get this, uh, two uh, records, if we ask uh, what is valid uh, tomorrow, we will get other three records. And now it, uh, this works uh, maybe quite well. If we want to delete an entry, we deactivate it. So we just update uh, the valid until of this entry to the current daytime. And uh, then it's done. We know that Bob, uh, Bob's uh, as a customer was uh, valid until now. And uh, if we ask uh, whether Bob is valid tomorrow, no, he is not valid anymore. If we want to visualize it, we have on this uh, uh, chart, you see three rows and all the times, and you see that these four color bars, they don't overlap. 
So it's okay. We don't have concurrent information. We have no information in the database that says that currently Alice pays two fees. So that's okay. But this is because we paid attention when we entered it, but the database doesn't know that uh, uh, whether this uh, information is unique at every time or not. What we can do, uh, in the first step, we could replace valid since and valid until, these two columns, we could replace them by one column, by just the column valid. And the column valid, it's, it is a timestamp, time is it, with time zone, time step, time zone range. Um, this means it is a range from until, including, excluding uh, the point, the extreme points. Um, if you see valid, it starts with a bracket and ends with a parenthesis. It means that the 1st of January is included and the 12th of March is excluded. Actually, instead of uh, these uh, dates, I could write the exact current time up to the microsecond. It would be the same. Uh, I just simplified it uh, to make it uh, simpler for you to read, to follow it uh, on the slides. So, um, PostgreSQL offers ranges for integer, big integer, uh, numeric, uh, timestamp, timestamp, time zone, with time zone and for dates. But you can also define your own range types. And with these uh, braces, brackets, parentheses, you can define uh, whether you want the edge points to be included or not. What I prefer is the second uh, line with one including and four excluded. This is the same concept as range in Python. So one Four means that one, two, three are included and four is not included. This has a great advantage if you have time step ranges because you take random time now with microseconds and you say one record is valid until this now excluded and the next one is valid since this same daytime included. That makes two uh, time step ranges adjacent uh, next to each other without any microsecond in between. And this is great because then you have really at every time in the history you have some record that is valid. Uh, ranges in PostgreSQL offer a lot of functions like test for adjacency, for overlapping, for um, complete uh, includeness uh, in next to each other or whether some points are included or not included or touch a range or not. And you can also extract the lower and the upper ranges, uh, edges, and also uh, see whether they are um, infinite or not. This infinity um, is great because if you have a timestamp range that is valid from now to infinity, you just say that it is valid until now, and it will be valid really until any time in the future, which is better than some concepts of daytime uh, maximum, which may be 9,999 or 2,099 or 2,038 or something in the future, which is a concrete, but now is independent from the implementation. It is always something in far future. So if we now change our uh, table, uh, we say, OK, valid, the uh, column valid uh, is timestamp, uh, time stamp, this is range, um, that is default from now to the future. And then to our two records, we want to add more records. We can insert, delete, and update uh, without problem. So insert means that we just insert a new record. Automatically, validity will be calculated as now until the future. Uh, now is not the moment now. It is actually the beginning of the transaction. So if you even if you run all these um, queries uh, one after each other, um, the now will always be the same, the beginning of your transaction. So that's great, even if the transaction takes an amount of time. If you want to delete some record, we just mark it as a closed. Uh, in this case, we can't just set the upper of valid to something. We have to update the whole valid to the lower of the same valid and to now. So this will update actually the upper of this valid to now. And update. Changing information is actually deleting or deactivating the old record and then inserting a new one. Um, yeah, and then the table looks like this, and we are happy. But we are still not sure whether our database is consistent, whether we don't have overlapping data. And for that, uh, 
is uh, great to use the B3 generalized uh, search tree extension uh, that is standard in, uh, in PostgreSQL. Uh, that allows us to build a um, constraint on, uh, on this table that makes sure that some records don't overlap with each other. Because using something like unique on a timestamp range doesn't make sense. If I have two timestamp ranges that are not exactly the same, but they overlap, they are not exactly the same, so unique doesn't work, but overlap is still a problem. Um, so in this case, we just define um, exclude using gist, and then are all our conditions that we want to make sure that they don't occur at the same time when a new record arrives. This means that there are no two records in the database with the same ID, so the same customer, and with overlapping validity. We have here two um, entries uh, with the same ID, but you see that these two validities, they don't overlap. So this, data, uh, this table is uh, perfectly valid. If you want to visualize it uh, again, uh, then you see that all these four bars, they don't overlap. So it's perfect. As soon as we try to insert something that overlaps, it will just uh, refuse to, to do it. Um, maybe you have seen that now we don't have this ID as a primary key anymore, because it appears several times. If we have, for Alice, we have several entries, we need actually several several records, so we cannot now guarantee that uh, the ID of the customer is a primary key, and we want that primary key back. So we are going to divide our entity into two tables. The basic one, customer, that has all the information that we don't want to uh, keep track of in the history. So it's ID because it's always the same, and maybe the name or login, something like that may be uh, permanent uh, to the customer. And then we have here an extra table with customer underscore ref uh, that references this customer ID and then contains all the rest that we know. This concept, uh, this construct uh, has the advantage that if you have plenty of entities in your database, you can just reference safely other entity IDs, like uh, uh, this customer ID and uh, then track all the timely or temporarily changing information in a special table. So we can have customer, customer ref, we can have something like invoice, invoice ref, product, product ref, any number of entities that we need. Uh, so in this example, we see that we have uh, our three customers, one, two, three, and then we have all our entries. And if we want to... Um, do any selects on these uh, two tables, we just join them, and then we say, okay, we want all the entries here where th that are still valid. And since the upper limits of uh, the validities here are always in the past, because this is something that you set always to now, and it's in all the transactions, so it's already in the past, um, just telling, okay, I want all the entries where the upper edge is infinity, this and this, uh, this will give me actually um, the information that only the customers one and three are currently valid because the customer number two, we have uh, deactivated him. Or if you want to know that what was, if you want to get the information about uh, the database uh, from some point in the history, instead of upper invalid, we just ask where valid contains some date in the history. So this was still one dimensional time. You can. Maybe hope, I hope you understand. Are there any questions? No? Okay. Because now we are going to add another time dimension. It's a bitemporal database design. This is a method of storing data records to represent both the history of the reality and the history of updates to these records in the database. The two temporal dimensions are, we want to know when the fact described by the record was known to the world, and to when the record was known to our database. It means if I keep track of your home address and, you, and I have your address and I send you some goods, and then you tell me, oh, in January I moved to a new address, but you tell it to me now. I can enter in the information in the database, you moved in January, but the information in my database came today, in March, and that may, allows me to tell you in the future, oh, the whole January and February, I believed that you lived still at the old address. And this is exactly where we can use this bitemporal database design. 
Uh, instead of valid, uh, I have now two uh, columns, uh, time step range world and time step range DB, like world when it is uh, known to world and DB when it is known to our database. And I have extended our uh, generalized uh, search index by these two other to, to, by, by these two uh, columns. So now we cannot have two records in the database for the same customer with overlapping TSR world and with overlapping TSR DB. So we are now going to need some graphs, graphic for that. Uh, we have now this uh, customer ID with fee, and now I say on the 15th of February, I got the information that this customer had to pay 10 euros from the 15th of February. So this is my graph for the real time, for, uh, when something is known in the database, and this is when it is known in the, uh, in the world. So if you want to ask uh, what was known in the beginning of uh, February, beginning of February, we say there was no information, because our TSRDB was not valid at the beginning of February. Uh, today, we have the information that there is something valid from the 15th of February until any future. So far, so good. Now, we enter a new record into the database, and we say, OK, today we enter a new record, and we say that there is a new fee from the 1st of March. This is the first record, this is the second record, and it means that from today on, from now on, it is, the information is valid that from the 1st of March, there is a new fee, and you see a conflict. You see that there are th these two areas are overlapping, and this is something that the database won't allow us. Because now, today, we have two valid records with, over, with overlapping information that is not legal in our uh, database. So what we have to do? First, we have to say, OK, this red record was valid until, only until now, until the 12th of uh, March. And from now on, a new one is valid. So we have to close this and activate a new one. This is perfect. Um, but in the future, we want to know that these two weeks, uh, end of February, there was some other fee valid. So we need to copy this um, record here and say, uh, yeah, from now on, it is valid that between the 15th of, of uh, February and 1st of March, the old uh, record was valid. So these three fields are these three areas, and you see that they don't overlap. They just extend infinitely, 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 but they don't overlap, and the database is safe. Now we want to do another update. Uh, we have to deactivate uh, the old one, this uh, narrow one, in the, for the future extend it, and they'll tell, okay, it will, uh, it will be valid until, only until now, and then add a new one. Now the database is safe. If uh, then, some, at some time in the future, we say, oh, all of this is not valid uh, because the customer shouldn't pay anything, then we can say, okay, on the 15th of uh, March, uh, we will just stop all this and then say, every time in the past, in the future, from now on, it is valid that this customer never had to pay anything. And then you will ha get a new area that is valid in this, in this, and in this direction. What we have seen were three actions. We did something on the 12th, on the 13th, and on the 15th of March. So there were three actions, but all of them touched several records in the database. So maybe we can, we can just say, OK, we are not in the database. We are in something like a Git branch, and we have uh, individual commits. Maybe we want to describe these commits. We want to um, put them together, and they say, OK, we did an update uh, in the database, we updated this, 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 this entity at the same time, and they have some common, uh, some common name, some common reason. In that case, we can just replace these three uh, or four uh, daytime objects by individual revisions, by integers. And then we say, OK, here there was nothing, but in the revision one, we did something, in the revision two, we did something, revision three, we did something, four, we did something, and so on. And that makes us create a new table, revision, with some revision ID, integer, and then uh, with the TSRDB, so timestamp range, when this revision was known to our database. 
and uh, with some description, with the name of the person who updated it, the reason, host name, you can log anything you want. You can add uh, more columns if you need. And then, of course, we need a um, generalized uh, search tree, and then say that these two, these um, timestamp ranges, they may not overlap. And then, in the beginning, we have a empty table, revision zero, that is still always valid. And then, as soon as we add a new one, a new revision, we just finish or deactivate this revision. Uh, we update it with the current time and then add a new record into the database. And then it looks like this. So here in our customer revision, instead of this TSRDB, we have integer range with the validity. This record was valid from the revision one up to the revision two excluded. It means that it was valid only in the revision one. This was valid in the revisions two and three. This was valid in only in the revision two only in the revision three, only in the revision three. This was introduced in the revision four and is still valid. And then here in the revisions, we always write new, uh, new entries. And advantage of this revision table is if you have a huge database with plenty, plenty, plenty of uh, entities uh, and relations between them, you just have one revision table and every time you update something somewhere and some underscore ref table is, has the uh, refs uh, valid uh, from until, um, they can use this common revision table. And you also have the information when someone updated something in the database. If you want to write into the database um, what you do in the table revision within one transaction, you close the previous entry, the previous uh, timestamp range, you insert a new one, and in all other tables that you want to touch, you close previous refs and insert new rows. In that case, the database will just make sure that everything is uh, uh, safe. So if you... Anybody using, uh, writing in Python here? Not so many. Okay, so I, I will just uh, fly quickly through. Uh, if you write a short uh, program for that, you can just uh, have one revision and then modify everything you need in your database. And then with some little code uh, updated in your database. The most interesting uh, thing is how to read from the database, because this is something that you are going to do from your application. Um, sh you should be consistent at any time. This means that uh, at the beginning you ask uh, which is the current revision, select maximum from revision, and then all your selects that concern some ref tables, they have to include the information which revision I'm interested in. But, yeah, you can do a direct uh, SQL or service. If you have service, you have better logging, uses st statistics, caching, and updates in service. But there is a problem with this maximum revision ID, because if you have, in your application, you have several calls to your service that happen, I, I want some information about customer, then I want some information about invoices, about products, then they will happen not immediately after each other, they will just happen at least a few milliseconds after each other. And that is a problem with consistent serial reading, because this is, again, some code in Python, the problem of what is now. Uh, data and data mutacy now looks uh, at the clock and gives you the current time. If you do these two lines, so I want to know the current time, and I want to know the current time minus one day, and I get yesterday. This code may fail, and it will fail at the moment where you are not in your office. <laughs> if you are in Europe. Because this code will fail around midnight of UTC. If you start these two lines just one micro nano picosecond before midnight, the first line will execute today, the second line will execute tomorrow, and today and yesterday will be twice the same daytime. If I start this before midnight, I have still today, and then after midnight, just one picosecond after midnight, um, the current time minus one day will be again the same day. So this is not what you want to do. You are not using your watch like uh, it's 16, and, uh, or it, you don't look first the hour and then uh, the minutes. Because I look, uh, maybe it's 15.59, uh, and then I see, okay, it's uh, 15, and then I look again uh, one second later, and it's already 0, 0. So it is 16, 0, 0, but I'm 
I have to see my uh, clock as, a, as an entity. So this is not a good idea to check the current time twice. Much better it is to check it only once and then do the, all the calculations. And the same with uh, our access uh, to our database. If we have a service that has two methods and method one, like give me the customers, uh, method two, give me the products, uh, between these two calls there will be a few milliseconds or seconds, and then the state of the database can change in between because someone maybe has done a new, uh, created a new revision, and uh, now you have uh, a problem, but you don't probably don't know that you have a problem. So it's better to implement it the way that the service, all the methods, they accept nothing or the, some date or some revision ID. If they accept nothing, they will just give you the uh, latest uh, revision, and they always return the revision ID they have used. So in the first case, it returns the current revision ID. In the second case, it returns the revision ID that was valid exactly in this time. And in the third case, it returns just the number 17. And then, if you call any further subsequent uh, methods, you just always give this revision ID. So, as I told you, this, all these revisions, it works actually like commits in, in Git. It's single branch. If you want to branch your database, the best way is to clone it, probably. You cannot do not anything else directly in, uh, in this uh, concept because it's uh, linear. Okay, what are the lessons learned? Um, ranges and uh, constraints uh, using generalized uh, search tree. Um, this was uh, Python specific, so now. And yeah, of course, uh, reading external sources like time and database independently from your runtime. Uh, Python and Postgres are cool, of course. And now you can certainly imagine how you could extend such basic uh, database tables uh, with the uh, revisions. Or, on the other hand, imagine what would happen if into your two dimensions of time you would add the time zones. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thanks for your talk. Um, I was just wondering, uh, when you're storing the database time, uh, why do you need a range? Because uh, as soon as you insert or update something in the revision table, uh, you only need the timestamp. Because it's the previous, um, the previous entry is immediately closed. You mean like the, the records should contain only the time where they were inserted? Uh, for the database. Okay, so if you are now searching for some record in the history, you would have to find always the last one updated before <laughs> the time you are asking for. Something like this, yeah. And something like uh, this. It, it would be more complicated, yeah. as you put it. This adds uh, flexibility that your selects look very naturally, and just for every ref table that you have, you just add a short test that you want the revisions that contain exactly the revision that you want. Okay, so you find thanks. Yeah. Hi. Is there a performance impact for common operations, like I know some standard join stuff that would be trivial before and now suddenly is not trivial anymore, or you pay a big price for it? I use that uh, for a database with less than a million records, and it worked really great. And we had already a few dozens or maybe a hundred of uh, revisions, and some of the data were, was updated uh, quite a lot. Advantage is that always when you update some data, you just add one row somewhere. You don't have to clone your whole database. So the database grows, of course. But at some times in the future, you can say, okay, I'm not interested in my revisions that are older than something. And then it is quite easy to just to remove them. Yeah. So you, it, it depends. It depends on your application, of course. But uh, maybe that's, that's a way of, uh, of removing everything that's older than some date in the history for the data that you don't need anymore. 
So you uh, implemented the revision, adding revisions to each uh, row in the original table using uh, Python code. But would you advise using triggers instead to every time you insert some uh, a row in the original table, you automatically? Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I tried it with triggers, but uh, there were some some tables were a little bit more specific, so I wrote actually a library that uh, does the whole stuff that also takes care of uh, concurrent writing. So. There, there are no triggers in, in my code. Everything was uh, pure Python code and re really not, not, not that much. No, but I, I preferred it to do it uh, on the application side because actually everybody who wanted to insert something in the database had to use uh, this uh, library. It adds you a little uh, level of abstraction. Uh, just... Um about uh, about splitting the uh, customer table into two tables, like yeah. customer and customer rev. Uh, if I get it right, the customer table is just there to uh, display uh, the um, the current uh, value, right, for one uh, given ID. No, no. You see, uh, in customer we have ID that makes that takes care of the ID that can be referenced from other. Um, from other tables and relations. And for example, this name is something that is one of the parameters that doesn't change, that is fixed uh, to the customer. And I don't want uh, to version it. And customer ref contains fee uh, column, and fee is actually something that I want to version. And then, of course, this valid uh, column takes care of, uh, of temporarily uh, attribute. So. You always, every information in the database is only once there. You don't put the latest information into the customer table. Actually, the customer table could be empty with just ID in it, but then it would be more difficult to find your customer if you select it, because ID is just numerical. But of course, you can work with that. Uh, as the data set is growing uh, and you want to, to have a consistent query time, uh, have, you th have you think about uh, implementing a partitioning and uh, what would be the good way to do it? Partition par partitioning? That solves a different problem. Because here, uh, with the data set uh, growing, the query time will not be uh, the same. You have exponential time. No, I didn't consider partitioning because for the data quantity that I had, this was not a question, not an option. Uh, but I don't think that now that data partitioning would just collide or... With time range? Huh? With collide with time range? Yeah. I see that you wrote a Python library to do this stuff. Is this open source? I just checked your GitHub and I see that you have a nice Python implementation of Ed, which is the standard editor. <laughs> um, but not this library. Is it available open source? Uh, unfortunately not. Ah, too bad. Well, actually, I had to check, sorry. But um, SQL 2011 introduced temporal extensions. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of that. And I think there's a module in uh, an extension, actually, in PostgreSQL to uh, to implement that. Uh, I don't know if you checked this. No, uh, I didn't check. Actually, this is something that I implemented two or three years ago with okay. uh, Postgres 9.6. Okay, yeah. So I will happily look at, uh, thank you for the information, I will look at uh, PostgreSQL 11 for to that. you later if you want. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.